today. This part three of the course deals with three optional topics. And I'm going to surprise some people with the very first topic I consider optional, which is the general quadratic formula. So let's talk about that first very briefly. Um, you'll notice that in part two, I was solving equations like 2x squared plus 7x plus 5 equals, I don't know, 13, just fine doing the box method we had, not knowing any general formula for this. Uh, most people that have studied quadratics before will be surprised that I don't move the numbers around. A lot of people have me subtract 13 from both sides and deal with 2x squared plus 7x minus 8 equals 0. They like equals 0 on the end. Why? Because they've been trained to think about quadratics in a different way. Because there is a general formula for solving equations of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So part 1 of this part 3 of this course deals with how to derive the general quadratic formula. But it's really just the box method. You don't need to know it at all. The box method does it all the time. And really the box method is that formula in disguise. The second topic that people deem op optional, but often not an algebra course for students, is that uh, sometimes there aren't real solutions to a quadratic equation. Clearly there's no number x squared equals negative three. Nothing times itself will ever be negative. Something times itself will either be positive or zero if it happens to be zero. And level one questions might end up with imaginary solutions. For example, I asked to solve x squared x minus 1 squared equals negative 5, no solutions. But some algebra curricula like kids to have this thing called an imaginary number, in which case they write down solutions to this even though they don't have actual physical meaning, at least at this level. So I deem this an optional topic and you can read about it in part 2. And the third part is, well, it's a natural question. If there's a general formula for solving quadratic equations, is there a general formula for solving cubic equations? ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero? Or quartic equations? ax to the fourth plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e equals zero? And so on. And it turns out there's a formula for this. And there's a reason we don't teach in schools. is because the formula is horrible. And there's a formula for this. And then we can go through the questions about when are the formulas for these sorts of formulas. But in part three of the course, I actually give you the formula for ax cubed. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. I don't just give it to you. We actually go through it. We derive it. It's actually within reach. It's just not pretty. So part three of the course deals with more general formulas beyond the quadratic. Part two deals with imaginary solutions. If you have a curriculum that insists that you do imaginary solutions, here it is for you. And part one is what most people are shocked at, I deem optional, the general quadratic formula. Great, thanks.